Hey guys, this is Soul Scriptura, and I've got another game for you guys today. Um, it is pre-recorded, so I apologize for that, but I think it's a, a decent match, so we'll go ahead and uh, watch it and talk about it together. Um, we end up winning the die roll, which is great, but this this hand is, is pretty mediocre. Uh, we don't really have much recurring damage outside of this price of progress, so we're leaning very hard on this being a good card if we decide to keep this hand. Uh, I think that we have plenty of new sevens that turn into sixes that are much better than this. Uh, for people that are against... Oh, I didn't know they could actually move these cards. This is cool. Uh, people that are against 20 lands will, will point to these kinds of hands, but if you watch the previous video, you'll see that we have just as many one-landers as, as we've had four-landers so far. So, um, I think that this is... I think it's, you know, there's not really an argument for those either way. Um, obviously, we will... Oh, I wonder if we could actually, like, change that a little bit. We're going to have to mulligan this. Um, and then we see a one lander here. Um, at this case, I do think we have to go ahead and we have to keep this one. Uh, we have enough um, one mana spells to get the job done, and we do have a price of progress we can lean on to uh, to make up for a potential slow start or something like that. If we need to do like a ton of damage all at one time for just two mana, um, Vortex is absolutely going to the bottom. It's something we're not going to be able to cast for a very long time, and we just kind of have to hope that we're not against an Oko deck. So, our Goblin Guy gets Force of Willed, which is pretty good news for us. Um, that means that they're probably Miracles at that point. Um, just the base, I mean, obviously I already know that this is going to be Miracles, but the fact that they're Force of Willing this means that either they're a Doomsday deck, I guess, because they're running Force of Will still, or they're probably Miracles and they probably don't have a Sword of Plowshares in hand or a very good way of getting a Terminus back on top of their deck. So, we're pretty excited to see this because it means that they don't have a hand that's uh, very that's, that's able to stop a creature very well. So, opponent plays a Tundra. Also exciting for us. Price of Progress now can at least do some amount of damage at instant speed. And then we draw a Goblin Guide, which, like I said, given that they Force of Willed that first Goblin Guide that came down, pretty likely that they don't have a Swords to Plowshares here. So we're absolutely playing the Guide here, we're definitely attacking, and we see Accumulated Knowledge on top of their deck, which is probably the best possible card to be on top of their deck for us, because it's a card that just says you lose the game, because <laughs> you're drawing a card at instant speed, <laughs> and the Burn player is throwing Lightning Bolts at you. <laughs> So they play a portent, they choose to not shuffle, and they go ahead and draw the card. And now they play Mystic Sanctuary, so this price of progress is looking even better. We draw Lightning Bolt, uh, which isn't the worst. We know that this game is probably going to go long, um, and we're okay with drawing extra one mana spells at this point. I kind of wish it was another Goblin Guide or a Swiss Spear if I had my decision uh, to do that, just because it's going to be more difficult for him to get out of those creatures than uh, being able to like get a counterbalance in play and all of a sudden be able to stop some of my cards that I have in hand. And right now we're just going to go ahead and suspend the Rift Bolts. Uh, when in doubt, I usually just suspend Rift Bolt. It gives you the most options on the next turn. So if for whatever reason he was to untap here and play Monastery Mentor, we would have two ways of dealing with that if we wanted to go after the, the, uh, the creature itself. The opponent plays a Brainstorm and then plays a Flooded Strand is okay. No real issues there so far. We're gonna go upstairs to the Rift Bolt, of course, uh, and we get got with Spell Pierce, which is interesting. So now we know that the opponent has a Spell Pierce in the main deck. We top deck Fire Blast, which is probably the worst possible card for us right here, but um, at some point it will be very good once we get another Mountain. So we know the opponent has Spell Pierce in their deck. We know they have Terminus on top of their deck. It's pretty safe to fire off a Lava Spike here because if they have Spell Pierce, they have to fetch away the Terminus and we get to um, keep hitting into this Goblin Guide more than likely. Uh, we know that they specifically brainstormed this Terminus on top of their deck to deal with this Goblin Guide. So again, they just don't really have a great way of dealing with this card. So if they do want to Spell Pierce or Lava Spike, they have to take a damage. Um, they counter this and then the Terminus is no longer on top of their deck, so fairly safe to fire off Lava Spike there. <laughs> Opponent hits us with Terminus, so that's fine. They're effectively at 9 life right now, and we have more than enough damage in hand. Uh, these two cards by themselves together would put him dead to another fetch land, essentially. 
the opponent plays the fetch land, we draw the mountain at the right time, which is great. Um, we're going to go ahead and play this mountain out. We'll go ahead and fire off the chain lightning. Um, I just really didn't think that he had another spell pierce in his main deck. It could be that they have two total, um, but he doesn't have snapcaster mage up right now. And I felt like it was probably more likely he would have a snapcaster than having the second spell pierce. So we go ahead and fire off the chain lightning. Um, he gladly takes three right there. And I believe I go ahead and I fire off the lightning bolt as well for that same reason. Yeah, I do. Um, he took the three pretty okay. Like he didn't really bulk, he didn't or balk at it, he didn't wait. And thinking again about having Snapcaster Spell Pierce and how good that would be against me right now. I'm just gonna go ahead and fire off this lightning bolt. I think that it's a good time to do so. Opponent cracks a flooded strand, goes down to three, cracks another flooded strand, and now there's just a ton of live cards in my deck that can kill him at this point. Um, Goblin Guy at the wrong time kills him. Eidolon Resolving kills him. So we're just drawing super live. Um, the opponent fetches to basically do accumulated knowledge. That makes sense. He's got the fetch lands in play. He needs the mana. So he, and he, he just wants to use it efficiently to get himself another card deeper. Opponent does play out a monster I mentor here, uh, which we're totally fine with. We're super far ahead. Um, we end up drawing a skewer of the critics here. And to be honest, I think I misplayed slightly here. Um, the only thing I was like really worried about getting blown out by was like him actually having a second spell pierce at this point in the game. And and a force of will and a blue card. So I was like, you know what, I'm so far ahead, I'm just gonna kinda sit here. I think it would have been pretty reasonable to actually go for it right there. I don't think it was incorrect at all. <laughs> but now that my opponent has played out Jace, uh, Spell Pierce is no longer an option, and I can beat a singleton force of will. So I'm just gonna go ahead and play the Price of Progress. Um, if he does force of will this, he goes down to one. I assume that he either brainstorms or fate seals us. If that's the case, so be it. Um, we'll then untap, and if we draw a bolts or something like that, we have bolt plus skewer plus fire blast the next turn, or we can try to fire blast him. Um, and, I mean, he'll just die to the fire blast actually because he won't even have enough mana or enough cards in hand to be able to force of will. So, pretty safe to go for price of progress here because only force protects him, and we can we can still beat force of will. So. Should be game. Yep. All right. Let's go on to the second game. All right. We are back for the second game here, and we decided to take out the price of progress. It's pretty obvious. Um, it, it did. It was slightly good against him that time, but it seemed like he was just blue white more than likely. Um, and he does have Mystic Sanctuary, but I felt like price of progress is probably a little bit better than it will be on average in that particular spot. So we took out three Price of Progresses, we brought in the other Sulfuric Vortex, and we brought in two Exquisite Firecrafts, so um, brought in some pretty good Haymakers against him that, at three mana. Um, pretty straightforward, really. We just kind of want stuff that's going to be uncounterable to do the last little bit of damage to him, or we want something that's a very difficult to remove threat that he's going to potentially have to take turns off of um, setting up his own game plan to answer our, our threat that will end up killing him. So. Uh, great hand as well. Uh, we're definitely going to keep this. We've got three lands, which is fine. Uh, we've got six burst damage in hand and two, again, pretty difficult to answer threats. Uh, Eidolon is something he has to answer pretty quickly on. Otherwise, he just loses. So definitely excited to see two of them. He, The chances are he can probably answer one somewhat easily, and then he may struggle to answer the second one. So... Um, while I can dream of more exciting hands against Miracles, I think that this is fairly solid overall. So the opponent leads on the Tundra, Price of Progress, um, potentially would have been a little bit better there. It could be that our opponent is just running like four Tundras or something like that. They go for a Portent. Uh, I don't remember if they shuffle or not there and it's not letting me see the game chat for some reason. So, we end up drawing a Swiss Spear, probably the best possible top deck, not named Goblin Guide. Uh, and it could eventually end up being better, depending on um, if we top deck like a Lightning Bolt and he tries to kill this with Snapcaster Mage or something like that on the next turn. Opponent plays Prismatic Vista, goes and gets an Island, and we're just going to see a Counterbalance. So, the opponent did mulligan to 6 this game, pr 
probably kept the hand largely on counterbalance. Uh, they're down to four cards in hand. And this could be a little bit scary. We draw a Fire Blast, which is pretty good. Uh, it's pretty good at being counterbalance. And it's nice to be able to finish them off. So we're going to go ahead and attack here. Their opponent down to 17. And this is a pretty easy Eidolon turn. Uh, the reason you want to play Eidolon here is because um, if they do decide to get cute and start casting Brainstorms and stuff like that to put things on top of Counterbalance to counter your Chain Lightnings, so they're going to be taken two from Eidolon. So Eidolon just like really squeezes the Counterbalance plan because now Counterbalance really has to do a lot of work and blind flip for them. Otherwise... Um, Eidolon is just going to punish them for casting Brainstorms and putting stuff on top of their deck to counter your, your Chain Lightnings. So it's like, the act of Brainstorming not only costs them a mana, but it costs them two life to prevent three damage. So it's like, you're saving just one, one damage there, and it's just really not worth it. Opponent flips, and they do have a Swords of Plowshares, which is probably the best possible... Um, non two drop to see off of counterbalance because now he knows that he can answer um, my monster so spear or my Eidolon. However, the opponent does decide to force of will pitching force of negation, which is an absolute win <laughs> in my book. And I'm still feeling really good about our spot here. I'm a little bit worried about this counterbalance. Uh, if he gets a couple of blind flips, we could be in trouble. And if we like flood out or something like that, we could be in trouble as well. So, I know about my opponent's Swords to Plowshares, right? What I'm going to do here is I'm going to swing in with the Swift Spear. And I'm just going to give it to my opponent. Just take one damage. I'm not really worried about casting the Chain Lightning here. Um, I I want to see what my opponent's going to do first. And if my Swift Spear gets in for just one damage extra, that's fine. Um, and I'm going to lead on Chain Lightnings here. See what's on top of this counterbalance, basically. The reason I want to do this now is I just, I'm just i trying to get the one drops out of my hand as quickly as possible before they can stabilize and start locking one drops out. Eidolon is probably going to be able to resolve at some point in the game. I'm trying to get my opponent to take out my Swift Spear with a Swords to Plowshares, which I think they're going to have to do at some point in the game, while also not like making it super obvious to like make my Swift Spear very big to where it's just a good Swords to Plowshares. So, what I'm trying to say is, like, I think I can play this game at such a speed that I can get in for just, like, a chip shot every once in a while with the Swiss Beard. If he just wants to keep taking one, that's fine. Um, eventually, he's probably going to have to Swords this. And then at that point, the Eidolon should be clear for takeoff. Um, hopefully, we can, like, cast another one drop to see what's on top of the deck, then resolve Eidolon or, like, Fire Blast or whatever. So, while it may seem a little strange that I didn't cast the Chain Lightnings first, um, I'm trying to not make this too big of a threat to Frim to Swords, because remember, he doesn't know about this other Eidolon in hand, um, and I'm thinking that, you know, he's kind of, with his mana situation, probably inclined to Swords, this plow swords to Plowshares the Swiss Spear this turn, so essentially what I'm doing is I'm trying to get one extra point of damage rather than getting greedy and trying to get um, an extra two points out, essentially. So the opponent takes the Chain Lightning, that's good for us. Uh, means he doesn't have a Brainstorm in hand, probably. Or at least not Brainstorm in a one-drop. Um, but we do know he has the Swords, however, so... The opponent goes for Accumulated Knowledge. So what he's doing is he's resetting the top of his deck, essentially. He's going to draw this this Mentor that we know about, and he's going to have something new on top of his deck to hopefully counter this Chain Lightning. Force of Negation. Again, great card for us to see. If, now we know that the opponent has a, mon uh, a Swords to Plowshares, a Mentor in hand, and some other card. If it's a land, he can actually cast Force of Negation. If it's not a land, he's not going to be able to cast Force of Negation unless it's a blue spell. So the opponent does take the three, goes down to nine. And we're in a pretty good spot here. Yep, it's not a land. So now the opponent has three cards again that we know about. We know they have a Swords of Plowshares, a Mentor, and a Force of Negation. And we can kind of play around that accordingly. Uh, and we draw probably the best possible draw on our deck, which is Exquisite Firecraft. We're going to go ahead and swing in with, uh, for one with the Swiss Spear, see if we can't get at least one more damage out of this. Um, he goes for the Sword Splashers now, which we're very excited about, uh, because now we get to resolve an Eidolon. I'm 
casting the Eidolon first, because these can both kill him if he finds a fetch land, essentially, and these are both very hard to counter. This is a little bit easier to counter, but if it resolves, he's probably in a pretty bad spot. Um, it's also worth noting that, like, this can still counter a Fire Blast, so we need to um, potentially play around that a little bit as well, so... So, we're gonna go ahead and cast this in, we don't know what's on top of the deck. So Counterbalance flips into a Scalding Tarn, which is great. Like I said, um, we've got 8 points of damage in hand, and this is something he's going to have to play and fetch to go down to um, 8. So Eidolon sticks, uh, very good for us. What I'm doing right now is I'm going to go ahead and sacrifice two mountains and Fire Blast him, because I know that this Fire Blast is going to resolve, and um, I... Uh, actually, I... Technically, I should have done this on... Yeah, this is actually bad play. I should have done this on his upkeep to play around this Force of Negation that we know about. So doing this on my turn exposes this to Force of Negation plus blue card, which would be kind of a punt. He would take at least two damage off of the Force of Negation, and we would probably just continue to win the game um, because our opponent would then have to like play out other cards into this Eidolon. Um, so we... This is the hand that we know about. It's just these two cards right here, and there could be a blue card, so it's actually incorrect for me to Fire Blast him right here. I'm supposed to do this on his upkeep, because that way he can't Force of Negation me, and he can't Spell Pierce me. Um, I mean, he like he can't Spell Pierce me anyways, but like there's no reason for me to to not Fire Blast him on upkeep here. So that was a, a bad play on my part. Or it is incorrect, I guess I should say. So now the opponent is just dead to this exquisite firecraft, which is great. Um, probably just dead to Eidolon. So we're going to go ahead and attack. The opponent has another sword supply of shares, which is a, definitely a good start for them. They're going to go down to three here. Uh, they did take damage, so I'm definitely going to cast this light at the stage while I can, just make use of my mana. And just hope that they don't have another 3 drop on top of their deck, basically. So there's accumulated knowledge on top, and this is going to prompt a concession from our opponent. So ideally that draws us closer to the last land we need, or just a bolt or a lava spike right there, and we can just finish the opponent off. Uh, we know that there's a 2 drop on top of their deck, so casting the... Uh, um, the bolt or whatever would be great, and we know what their hand is. Their hand is currently this. So, uh, pretty good matchup for us for sure. Definitely excited to see Miracles when you're playing through a league. Um, pretty fun deck for us to play against, just because they're so slow and dirtily, and they really just kind of have to have a, a fairly good hand to get through it. Um, it's also worth saying that we got incredibly lucky with Counterbalance hitting at the right time for us. Um, you know, like we resolved the Eidolon before he had the accumulated knowledge on top of his deck, and we resolved the Chain Lightnings before he had the Sword Supplashers on top of his deck, and, you know, we were able to um, draw into, like, an Exquisite Firecraft to for sure finish him off and stuff like that. Um, and then light up the Sage before he had either of these cards on top of his deck. Uh, again, something to learn from that video is we should have fire blasted on the upkeep. There was virtually no downside to, to doing it then compared to doing it when I decided to do it where force of negation could have technically blown us out. Realistically, it probably wouldn't have mattered. Um, had he decided to do so, he would have gone from nine to seven uh, with the Eidolon trigger. Then we would have, I think we attacked at some point with Eidolon and got some damage. But anyways, he, he would have essentially been at one here. Um, no, no, I'm doing the math wrong because Fire Blast resolved. Anyways, my point is that we should have we should have Fire Blast on upkeep to be uh, to play perfectly there. All right, guys. Uh, hope you learned something. Hope you enjoyed watching, and I will try to, try to record the rest of this league in real time so we don't have to play with this nonsense. Thanks.